Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love. Praise the Lord family. My name is John Nathan Owara and I work with Scripture in Uganda. I'm very excited to bring to you the next segment of Embrace. Today, our teaching is on poverty. We want to find out what is poverty. We shall do two things, or three. One, we shall define what poverty is, and then we shall look at poverty as an acronym, and then see what the Word of God says about poverty. I want to help those who are stuck in poverty get out of poverty. So let's define what poverty is. We shall use the general definition of poverty. Either this is from internet or from uh, the dictionaries. Poverty is the state of being inferior in quality or insufficient in amount. Poverty is a state of being inferior in quality or insufficient in amount. Where you feel you are inferior in quality. You feel you are lower than other people. You feel that you don't have enough compared to what other people have. The second definition is that poverty is the state of having few material possessions or little income. You have maybe one pair of shoes or something like that. That's the world definition of poverty. You also feel maybe if you have uh, two pairs of trousers compared to someone who has more, you're poor. Poverty can have multiple a social, economic, and political causes and effects. There are many reasons that bring about poverty. But the third definition of poverty is that it refers to lack of the necessities of life. When you lack food, when you lack shelter, you lack clothing, that could be poverty. I know there are people who lack food. There are people who lack shelter. There are people who lack clothing. And when we look at them, we refer to them as poor people. And we're normally looking for resources to help these people. So when they talk about poverty in Africa, they're probably referring to this definition. Another definition of poverty, it's a state of mind. It's a belief that you have nothing and that you are nothing. I want to take this particular definition. You have a brain which is among the most powerful organs that God created in a human being. The fourth definition of poverty is very key because people define poverty as a state of mind. And I'll take this one. It's a state of mind. It's a belief that you have nothing. It's a belief that you are nothing. And this, many times we refer to ourselves, I am poor. I have nothing. I am nothing. That's a dangerous state to be in. And actually for me, I believe that that is the actual state of poverty. Where people believe that I have nothing. I am nothing. Just because, just because maybe, you know, some people have shoes, yes. But they still look at themselves as nothing. As compared to other people. That's a dangerous state to be in. I believe that is the worst state of poverty to be in. You know, one could have all the physical needs. One could have all the necessities of life and still be poor. One can have everything. One can have money. You can have cars. You can have vehicles. You can have and still be poor. And still believe that you have nothing. It is a state where many children of God have found themselves in. And this is a state where people are in because they don't have Jesus. When you don't have Jesus, you're in a state of poverty. You're in a state of lack. You have the money, you have everything, but you lack Jesus. Because everything holds together in Jesus. So poverty to me, as I teach this, is a state of lack of Jesus. The second way I would define poverty is that you don't obey Jesus. And you don't walk with him as a Lord and Savior. That is another state of poverty, being poor. You may have the shoes, yes. You may have the clothes, yes. 
<laughs> but you don't have Jesus in your life. You don't walk with him as your Lord and Savior. That's a dangerous state to be in. And, and the third way that I define is that when you don't align your life with the word of God, because the word of God, according to Psalm 119, verse 105, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. How I pray for you. How I pray that you remember that you have a brain, one of the most powerful organs that God created, and that you are not poor. You can only be poor if you don't have Jesus in your life. Because Jesus, in him, all things hold together. So let's look at the word of God. Let's look at the word of God. What does the word of God say concerning poverty? What does the word of God say concerning riches? Matthew chapter 6, from verse 25 to 34, I am going to read. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And those of you on your screen, they're going to put a version. It could be New King James Version or another version, but you could follow with me. Matthew chapter, 20, chapter 6, verse 25 to 34 says this. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So you cannot be poor just because you don't have clothes. Your life is more important than clothing. Your life is more important than food. Yes, it's more expensive than that. You need food, you need clothing. But the Bible is telling us, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? You are worried about food, you are worried about clothing, but life is more important than that. Verse 26, look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you, no, are you not more? Are you not of more value than they? You are more valuable than the birds. And continues to say, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Which of us, by worrying, can add even a little bit of life to your body? Can you add life? Can you add one year to your body by worrying? In fact, the more you worry, research has shown that the more you worry, the more you're cutting off your age. You're reducing on your years. Verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I said to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed or not dressed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Verse 31. Then I thought, not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Friends, the things we worry about, the Bible tells us we should not worry about these things. Because the more we worry, the more we reduce our time the more we reduce our life. So poverty is a state of not having Jesus. When you don't have Jesus, you can't understand what the Bible is saying. You can't understand these things. You don't have Jesus. You don't click. But when you have Jesus, you have everything. That's why he says in verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first God. Look out for God. Look out for everything that God comes with. And that is him alone. And all these things will be added to you. So let's go to the acronym poverty. Let me help us understand poverty. In line with Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. What is poverty? We shall use P O V E R T and Y. Now I'm going to be using, I'm going to be two-sided. The positive and the negative. Again, it is up to you to choose <laughs> which one you want to take. 
Poverty is a state of mind. Especially for those without Jesus. Like I said, you can have everything and not have Jesus. And if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. So P, what is poverty? Poverty, we've explained. But let me help you get out of poverty by using poverty as, a, as an acronym. Let me help you get out of poverty by using poverty as an acronym. So poverty, you can look at it either as potential or as pain. You have potential. And you can choose to have potential. You can choose to take the potential and put it into use or you can look at that you can look at yourself as a pain. Oh, I have nothing. I am useless. I have nothing besides me. I only have one cloth. I wish I had a second pair of shoe. And because of that, you are in pain. So you can be pain. You can be in pain. Or you can use that as potential. So you have potential. Or from poverty. Or it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to to, to get better or you can be you can take offense when someone says you're poor you can use it as an opportunity to get to a better place or you can take it as an offense when someone tells you you are poor or you are in poverty it's not an abuse it's an opportunity for you to get better the more you take offense the more you take offense the more you remain in a state of having nothing. Take the opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior if you have never accepted Jesus. Take the opportunity. Or forever take offense. These born again people, these saved people, they are talking about Jesus. Yes, we talk about the Jesus we know. He is, he is everything to us. So stop being poor. Stop being in poverty. Take the opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. V, you can value yourself. Value what you have. Value the brain you have. Value the little that you have. Or you can be a victim. All the time, they're abusing me. Oh, they're abusing me. All oh, these people, these rich people, they don't value me. You can use it as an opportunity to value everything you have. Or you can be a victim. It's your choice. I said I'm talking about two sides, the positive and the negative. Some people have taken poverty as a pain. They've taken poverty as an offense. They've taken poverty and they're victims. Others have taken poverty as potential and they're getting out of it. Others have taken it as an opportunity to get out, get better. Others are valued and they're getting out of poverty. They've valued what they have. When you have a brain and you have Jesus, you can never be poor. <laughs> and for us, our riches are both on earth and even in heaven. E, you can earn. Look at poverty as an opportunity to earn. Get out. Put your head to use. Look at poverty as an opportunity to earn from the sweat of your labor. You must sweat. You must work. You must earn. Or you can remain embarrassed. You can remain embarrassed. You can't stand among people who are earning. You're embarrassed. How many of you have taken the opportunity that God has given you? You grew up. Some of us, we grew up in poor families where we used to eat portion and salt. Oh, I took the opportunity to earn. Where I am right now, I know I eat portion and salt. Some of us grew up where we used to, we used to walk to, to, to school on bare feet. Some of you who are watching, you know where you grew up? You had a collar which was torn. But you took that as an opportunity. And you said, I will earn one day. You went and you worked. See where you are today. Why don't we help other people get out of poverty? Poverty. R is for reformation and responsibility. Once, when you realize that you're in a state of poverty, you can use that as an opportunity to be responsible and to reform and get out of where you are. Or you can resist reformation. You can also resist a change. And the president of Uganda, the current president, 
or in this age that we are in. As we're talking about getting poverty alleviation, getting, po I mean, we've been talking about poverty alleviation, getting out of poverty, getting out of poverty. Some people have resisted this and have remained poor. You are not poor. It is your head that has caused you to remain in that state. You have a brain. You can sit, reform your brain, reform your thinking, and become responsible. My father who is watching this, my mother who is watching, my brother, my sister, my children who are watching this, be responsible. You cannot remain poor when you have a brain. So stop resisting change. Stop resisting and take that abuse that changed your poor, your poor, take it as an opportunity to be responsible. Clean where you have to clean. Go to work on time. Use your time at work and use it well. You have an opportunity to go to school, study, be responsible. One day you'll get out of where you are. T, you can use that poverty and set a target and take off and rise to a great future. T is for target. Have a target. Have a target and get out. Have a target. What do you, five years from now, 10 years from now, what's your target? And then take off. Take off means get set, go. Don't remain there. Uh -uh. Don't just say, uh, uh. Sample, sample, instead of taking off, they are talking. One day I will become a doctor, but you're failing. <laughs> one day, you know, <laughs> one day I will also have a garden. And, uh, in the future, um, I will marry, <laughs> you know. <laughs> people, people are speaking. You are just talking. Act, take off. You know, uh, one day <laughs> when God allows, I will also have a business. God has allowed. He gave you a brain. You mean by giving you a brain, God has refused? Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, man, stop. Stop talking. Take off. Hey, take off. Have a target and take off. Begin. Take off means begin doing something. And lastly, why is for yearning. Yearning means have a desire. To get out of poverty. P is for potential. V is for value. Value what you have. E is for earning. Earn. E is for earning. Earn. Learn to work hard and earn. R is for responsibility. After a reformed mindset. T is for having a target and taking off to get to that target. And Y is for having a yearning. To get out of poverty. Again, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. I want to cement it by saying, it says this. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Friends, many of you and many of us, we are poor because we have not sought after God. Study the word of God. Pray to God. Look for the things that touch the heart of God. Look for those things which God desires, not your own personal selfish things. And as I wind up, I have a question for you. The things that you desire, the things you yearn for, are they the things that God desires? If they are not, then you're seeking after the wrong things. And he's telling you, seek after my righteousness. Have you accepted Jesus in your life? If you have, then continue finding out from God what he desires for you and for the people around you. If you have not, it's a good opportunity for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I want to pray with you. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you're that person and you say, John, Uncle John, I want to accept Jesus in my life. I want to repeat this short prayer after me. Because the only way to get out of poverty, especially the mindset of poverty, is beginning with Christ and walking with him. Are you that person? Close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. 
Jesus, you are welcome in my life. Please forgive me for all the wrong things I have thought, I have said, and done. From today, I choose to follow you as my Lord and Savior. Please write my name in your special book. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've just made that prayer, look for a nearby church to belong to. And remember, poverty is not your portion. You can have potential. You can take the opportunity. You can earn from it. You can value it. You can be responsible. You can target and take off and continue desiring and yearning to be what God has for you. God bless you. Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love.